Good morning, Canada, and welcome to An Hour with Allie. Today's segment is about women in advertising. I've been looking forward to this one all week. We will have three guest speakers on the show with us today, along with some fun video commercials to take place on our breaks. Everything in the show will relate to each other, so let's get started. Cool. Now we are going to discuss the very educated Sutja Lee's point of view. He is a professor of communications at the University of Massachusetts and founder and executive director of the Mass Education Foundation. He is one of the world's leading scholars examining the role played by advertising and popular culture in the processes of social control and identity construction. Unfortunately, he will not be joining us today, but he does send his regards to the show. In Suchile's article, Advertising, Gender, and Sex, What's Wrong with a Little Objectification? He touches on the objectification of women in advertising. Jelly references Irving Goffman's book, gender advertisements and shows us that in advertising the best way to fully understand the female male relation is to compare it to parent child relation where males and parents were sorry where males are parents and females are the children because in advertising it is evident that females are treated as children on more than one occasion goffman's examination of the portrayal of hands in advertising is where he finds supportive evidence that the women's hands usually are shown caressing and barely touching an object as though they are not in full of control of it, while men's hands are shown fully grasping the object, showing that they have full control over it. The argument Jelly has made depends wholly on the understanding of the context of social phenomenon. While there is nothing wrong with a little objectification, there is a great deal wrong and dangerous with a lot of objectification that is when one that is when one is viewed as nothing other than an object. So that was Sutja Lee's point of view and he does send his regards to the show like I said earlier. Now we are going to go to the commercial and we are going to show the Molson Light commercial. Take a look at it. it works when they smudge stuff on each other. But if we did it... Whoa! Doesn't work. Rose Light. Enjoy your nature. First guest speaker on the show today will be Rosalind Gill. She's joining us here. Uh, she's the author of Empowerment Slash Sexism. Figuring Female Sexual Agency in Contemporary Advertising. Hi, Rosalind. How are good you today? Morning, Ali. I'm Thanks good. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hi, and you can take the floor. Thank you. Well, um, so today, uh, like she said, I'm going to be talking about my article, and I'm going to start off by talking about the major Thank you for having me. So, um, like Ali said, in my article, I talk about a lot of topics touching about how advertising works. And um, one of the subjects I talk about is how is the midriff identity. Basically what it is, is that um, how women use their sexuality as a power, as an empowering tool to sell what they're selling. And advertising companies will take that and use that power of my tool as, um, as a way to get us to buy their products. And um, so my friend Richard Pole, the professor of, um, at British Columbia University. He also touches that subject. He talks about how women, um, women's sexuality is being used in, um, in our society today and how um, he did a lot of research on the social and cultural background of like our society, the way it, it's going to use attractive men and women to, is that to get us to buy their products, like I say. And um, yeah, like in the ad dish that you just saw, basically what they're trying to do is like, they have two guys and two girls and they're trying to get us to buy that beer because if we drink that beer, what we're going to get is two girls massaging each other and, you know, going on in a sexual adventure together. And so we buy that beer, we get, that's where we get sexual sex satisfaction. And our next speaker on the show today will be uh, Toby. He's here today representing Helen Irving. Helen Irving wrote Little Elves and Mind Control Advertising and its Critics. So here's Toby. Hi, Toby. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Have a seat. And you have the floor. 
Okay. Women are considered as sex objects depending on their posture, their facial expression, their makeup, their skin color, and everything. So all these factors, you can tell that women are being used as sex objects. So, um, um, like in the Little Elves of Mind Control, which I, I even wrote, we, we, we discovered that the creation of false and true needs are being uh, kind of manipulative and the emerging power advertisement. And we can tell that these are the different techniques advertisers use today to attract we audience who cause humans to buy products. I'm going to take a quick break and see the Miller Lite beer commercial that he will be discussing next. See you Miller Lite tastes great. Yeah, but I drink it because it's less filling. Great taste. Less filling. Great taste. Less filling. Great taste. Less filling. Great taste. <laughs> Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. I got an idea for the ending. Let's make out. Hey, welcome back. Now we have a commentary on the commercial. Back to you, Toby. So in the beer ad, you discover that you see two females, two beautiful females, fighting together for this product to be here. And like they say, it's tasty, it's bitter, it's not nice that they keep fighting. So these kind of things, advertisers have learned over the past years which draw their attention. So they keep fighting, and this draws the attention of the people out there. Okay, cool. thanks for uh, joining the show, Toby. Now we're gonna take another commercial break, and then we'll be back after. Imagine me and you, and you and me, no matter how they toss the dice, it had to be The only one for me is you And you for me So happy together Next, we're going to be joined by uh, Douglas Kellner via phone interview. He and John Arms wrote Toward a Critical Theory of Advertising. Hi, Douglas. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Well, if you can take the floor, everybody's listening here. Hey, thank you, Ali. Um, I'm going to be talking about my article, and it, it's basically how the ads create pattern systems of meaning using visual codes, simulates that cause consumers to associate with the products and with certain pleasures. Okay, this is usually constructed through the lens of gender. For example, as targeted as men emphasize ruggedness, fertility, and those aimed as women emphasize beauty, romance, and family. This commodity means that we invest socially desirable in consumer goods. So these are basically the things that we men, the masculine and female feminine, we they look, at, they look at in our ads. That's basically what the article is going to be talking about. Okay, well, you've heard it from uh, Douglas Kellner himself, so that's wrapping up all of our guests. We had uh, two guests on the show and one guest speaker via phone interview. So thank you so much for joining us. That's all the time we have today. Last, we are going to be showing a Guinness commercial that will leave some food for thought. And have a great day and see you tomorrow. Okay. See you soon.